does this happen again? Oklahoma getting outplayed again by Texas two years ago, 2013. I, mean, I thought I was reliving Groundhog Day. The Longhorns smashing Oklahoma two years ago. Last year, in so many ways, Texas dominating the Sooners. It's just that OU had big plays in that game and Texas penalties, which aided Oklahoma getting out of the Cotton Bowl, escaping with a five-point win. But today, no Sooner magic, no big touchdown plays that came from the Oklahoma magic satchel. Wasn't going to happen. Texas jumped out on front early and was able to make it hold up. Texas 24, Oklahoma 17. Not only so much for the Sooners being a 16-point favorite and not having Texas outplay them again. You'd think Oklahoma-Texas would be the ultimate attention-getter for getting motivated. Nope, nope, didn't happen. Texas wanted it more. You would have thought that losing to Texas two years ago and getting to see your pants kicked last year despite escaping with the win might have gotten your attention. No, 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 no. From what it looked like to me, it looked like Texas was going to say, hey, our season begins right now. Whatever feuding we've had between the upperclassmen and freshmen, whatever wars on Twitter have been taking place, whatever happened in Fort Worth last week, losing by 43, and whatever happened in two games that Texas maybe should have or could have won if it weren't for bad special teams play, Texas put that on the back burner, and today you had a feeling that Texas Wanted a lot more than the Sooners. It kind of went through the motions, kind of lollygagging early on. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away from Texas. They deserve to win. But the Sooners, for some reason, were now 14 to nothing. Looked like deer in the headlines. They look stunned, but even more disturbing, they look flat-footed. And Texas got their crowd involved. And by the way, I will be playing a clip later on in the show, which, by the way, I had from the weekly matchup show, and I think it kind of sums it up. But... You look at the Longhorns, you look at their players, and something was very obvious today. They played hard for their coach, Charlie Strong, who probably came off a very hellacious week after losing to TCU by 43, dropping to 1-4. and four. Texas's worst start since the Dwight Eisenhower presidency of the 1950s. And those players said, you know what? We're going to play hard for our coach because we don't want him to go. We don't want him to be fired, okay? We don't want him forced out. We don't want those alums of Texas to stop writing the big checks because we're not winning. We're going to play hard for Charlie Strong, who believes in us. We're going to play hard for our school, for our student body, for our state, and for Texas. You got the feeling that, most importantly, they played hard for themselves. And there was no fluke about it. So how did Texas pull it off besides the fact that they – um, really showed that they wanted more than my Sooners. I think, number one, winning the battle up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Look, I don't care if you're an underdog, if you're a favorite, or if it's a toss-up game according to Vegas. If you're going to win, you better win the battle up front. And how about this? Texas, over 300 yards of rushing, and my Sooners, pathetic. Only 67 yards on the ground, 1.8 yards per carry. Of course, we documented earlier, number two reason, Texas got ahead early. They got ahead early, effective passing in the beginning, but it was the ground game that really did a job for the long ones as they rushed for nearly five and a half yards per carry, moving the Sooner defensive line back. Oklahoma didn't know what hit them. And number three, making plays on defense. Texas's defense had looked bad against TCU. They looked bad against Cal. They looked really bad against Notre Dame in the opener. But you talk about making major improvements. One thing that they did, they won the line of scrimmage battle, but they also, too, took chances on blitzes, and Oklahoma acted like they had not seen that coming. They looked like they were not prepared for that. Texas's players just outplayed Oklahoma, and they got to Baker Mayfield six times. Mayfield's not the type of quarterback that for the most part is going to force passes, okay? He'll hold it as long as he can and then try to make a decision. But today, six sacks. And by the way, just in case it hasn't dawned on, you know, me and other Oklahoma Sooner fans thoughts, a lot of these players that you saw from Texas, you're going to see them next year and you're going to see them the year after. You saw a lot of uh, freshmen, true freshmen, Redshirt freshmen out there. They whipped some of Oklahoma's upperclassmen today, and it wasn't even close. I know the scoreboard says 24-17, and the Sooners should give them credit for not quitting, give themselves a shot. 
But what started this game that worked in Texas's favor ended the game for Texas, and that was getting to the quarterback. And the bottom line is this, Sooners. If you can't block, try something different, okay? Run screens, do something different, but let's not make it an instant replay. And that's exactly what it was on this Saturday, an instant replay. The Sooners, you know, it didn't matter if the offensive line couldn't block. When the pressure was on, the running backs who were supposed to provide protection. They couldn't block either. It didn't really matter. Texas got to Mayfield, and that was something that we hadn't really seen Texas do real recently, and that was get to the quarterback, at least as often as they did on this day. For the most part, Texas's defense has been bad. And that's just not me saying it. The stats show it. You know, we mentioned this on the weekly matchup show. Outside of the top 100 in many key categories, red zone defense, you know, pass defense, rush defense, total defense, they were horrible. Today, it was a whole nother game. And speaking of that, this is something that I said on my weekly matchup show earlier. This is something that I talked about as far as another reason why Texas was capable of pulling off an upset. Here it is. That's right. 2013. That day OU was a 12-point favorite, ranked 11th in the country, pretty close to what they're ranked right now. And Texas had already lost twice that year. Both losses were not very pretty at all. So what I'm trying to say was there was hardly any indication that Texas, in case McCoy, the quarterback back then, was going to, you know, just deliver a ferocious butt whipping on the Sooners. And we were proven otherwise. So I'm trying to tell you is that every game in football has its own identity. Could you tell on this Saturday who the 1 and 4 team was? Could you tell on this day who the number 10 ranked team in the country was? Just like two years ago. Texas that year got killed by BYU. You know, Ole Miss took him to task in the second half of that game, won that game easily. And Texas barely got past a bad Iowa State team just the week before playing the Sooners. Same thing happened. Texas took control of the game early and made it count. The Sooners, on the other hand, back then, two years ago, 11th in the country. Undefeated, looking like they were on their way to bigger and better things. Uh-uh. Couldn't run the ball and gave up big plays. To me, two plays that are going to stick out in this game for me, um, if I had to pick two, would be the Alex Ross fumble. And I, I point this out because Texas had just scored the initial touchdown, 7 nothing halfway through the first quarter. Special teams has not been Texas's forte. In fact, I can't think of a team worse in the country entering this game on special teams than the Longhorns. But when you can force a turnover on a kickoff, remember the kickoff return last year costed Texas essentially a lot, and possibly the game when Alex Ross ran one back for a touchdown. Oklahoma got the lead and never let it go. And number two, Texas... One thing that they did have a feather in their cap entering this game was the turnover margin. Plus five entering this game, make it plus six. That's right. It was only one turnover, but the turnover led to a Texas touchdown. The short field, Texas was up 14 to nothing. At that point, you have a feeling if you were a Longhorn fan, and especially a Longhorn player and coach, that you had the absolute realistic belief that you can win this game. Up two scores before Oklahoma even really had a chance to break a sweat. And the other big play in this game was, no question, uh, the, uh, the the foreman run, okay? Because, you know, Texas has the ball deep in their territory. Oh, you just got a touchdown. It, it's 17 to 10. Crowds, Oklahoma's really, really into it. Third quarter's about to close out. Third and long, and what happens? It wasn't a touchdown run, but it felt like one. Foreman popping an 80-yard-plus run getting from one end of the field to the other. And then Texas, of course, once fourth quarter commences, gets a touchdown and would turn out to be the game winner, 24-10 at that point, and Texas wins 24-17. Those, to me, were the two biggest plays because one play really established momentum with the Ross fumble that Texas recovered for a touchdown, and the other play, which was late in the third quarter, ended Oklahoma momentum, in which at that point they had cut the Texas lead in half from 17-3 to 17-10. Sooner crowd was into it. Sooners, had, at that point, had a reason to feel good because you got a whole quarter to go. You're only down seven. Looks like you're going to get a third down stop, potentially. 
and maybe have half a field to work with with a quarter to go. Had to like your chances at that point, but Foreman and Texas's offensive line broke the camel's back at that point. In this case, the Sooners' camel's back. So, you know, the, the Longhorns, I, I don't know if this is going to be like 2013 all over again where, you know, the win takes what would have been a long Texas season and puts them into the Big 12 championship game. That likely will not happen because of the fact that they're at 2-4 and four right now. They've already got two conference losses. So it's still going to be a tough road with West Virginia on the road and Kansas State at home, not to mention the fact they still have to uh, play Baylor at the end of the year. But what this does establish is a beginning, and a beginning in confidence maybe for the fans to know that Charlie Strong and company can pull off something big. Okay, got to remember two years ago it was Matt Brown who pulled off the big upset as a double-digit underdog, but today – it was Charlie Strong with the biggest win, no question, in his short coaching career so far at UT. And maybe this establishes the fact that, that, you know what, don't be surprised if they pull off another upset at some point this year. And next year, with so many uh, young players coming back, including you know freshmen now who will be sophomores next year, Texas may be on to something. And for the Sooners, hopefully they'll get their heads out of their butts. And I put this on the players, okay? If you are a player for Oklahoma – all you got to say is one thing, or anybody has to say one thing. Texas, that's all the motivation you need. That's all the motivation necessary for a game like this. And they didn't have it today. Texas did. And Texas kicked their ass 24-17. And we'll find out if the Sooners can get rid of their arrogance and get ready to play K-State on the road at Snyder Family Stadium. Of course, uh, K-State um, on Saturday night will be playing uh, TCU. Oklahoma usually does well after the uh, after the Texas game, win or lose under Bob Stoops, and also too, you know they usually do well at Kansas State. In fact, they're five and zero at Kansas State in the Bob Stoops era. But now they gotta go into um, Manhattan, uh, feeling a little stunned, a little shell shocked after what Texas did to them. And for anybody out there, I'm gonna close this out, you know, because you know, for, for Mayfield, it wasn't. A bad day stat-wise, he just didn't get a whole lot of time. And for, and for the for the rushing offense, for the for the line of scrimmage on both sides, they, they've seen better days, okay? So you got to think the Sooners will take today. They'll get over the shock. They'll learn from it. And, you know, I don't know, maybe have something uh, good planned for the rest of the season. Their first half of the season is done just about. They'll uh, play their sixth game next week in Manhattan against K-State. But let me say this real quick. Anybody out there who thinks Bob Stoops should be fired for this performance or he should be fired at the end of the year, you're an idiot, okay? You're a flat-out idiot, all right? One of the best coaches in the country, they're going to lose games. And you're even going to lose games you're not supposed to lose. But it's how you bounce back. And believe me, Bob Stoops will find a way to get Oklahoma um, feeling good again and back in the winner's column. Today, it was Texas's day at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Texas wins 24-17, and believe me, if Bob Stoops is not the head coach of Oklahoma, it won't be because of David Bourne or Castiglione. It will be, in my opinion, for one reason. It's because Bob Stoops wants to leave Oklahoma. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Give credit to Charlie Strong. It was his biggest win as Longhorn head coach, and yeah, feeling for Texas, it could be the beginning of bigger and better things for them, um, perhaps this year, but definitely next year their future looks bright. And he recovers from a hellacious week. And for the Sooners, yeah, the week could have ended a lot better. But got to block, got to tackle better, and can't fall behind by two scores that early in the game against a rival. That's what happened in Dallas. Congrats to Texas. We'll see how Oklahoma, if, if, they, uh, if they give a damn next week against the Wildcats. Boomer Sooner.